Today's agenda is to discuss about declarative versus programmatic style in Salesforce. So when you plan for developing a application in Salesforce, you go through the requirement of that particular business application. There you will have to decide whether that business application can be implemented declaratively or programmatically or using both the methods. So in, de in declarative uh, term, Salesforce provides few click and point tool with, through which you can actually implement or enforce business logics. And in each layer like in user interface in business logic and data model you use different kind of business logic implementation so for example if you are choosing declarative thing then certainly in user interface you are going to customize page layouts you are going to create record types for different views for different purpose now if we move ahead and go to business logic then there are formula fields and there are validation rules and also workflow and approvals rules through which we can actually implement a business logic so for example uh, if if a record need some kind of approval then we can put approval process in that particular object using salesforce point and click style now it is when it is about data modeling then there are certain things like object fields and relationship which needs to be taken care in this declarative aspect but if you well, if you think that that business business application requirement can be implemented using both ways declarative and programmatical way then you choose from following in user interface you choose visual force page to totally uh, command over the view and a look and feel of the visual uh, of the page then in business logic you choose to code right to write code in apex controller and apex triggers then if it is about storing data that, and retrieving data then certainly you can use metadata api rest api and bulk api to access the data dynamically so here i have listed declarative logics and their components like workflow rules, validation rules, etc. Now we see the limits to declarative style of business implementation. So the limit is if we want more customization of user interface, then that is not possible through this declarative aspect. There is one more limitation which is cross-object cross actions. Suppose if you want to ex, uh, if you want to enforce a workflow rule which should actually change some field in other object which is not related with this particular object then this is a limitation and you will have to choose a custom development using triggers though both have their own utilities and you can actually use combination of both or you can either choose declarative or programmatic way so uh, this is the basic question then what should we do whether we should use click and point technology 
or we should write code so it depends actually so depends on several factors like cost and time so if you are planning for a custom development then certainly you will allocate resources for that development then it would actually incur a development cost and time as well then it then it comes to maintenance so when when you ask someone to develop code then who would maintain that code and after that particular initial development this is a big question mark for everyone now if they don't have in house team then certainly this is a big question and code can be written by several different people and their coding style etc are different and this leads to a complexity and scalability issue so these are few consideration to choose whether you should use click and whether you should write code so we can actually see a few examples of declarative and programmatical style so actually triggers it uh, triggers in programmatically uh, implementing business logic and field update using workflow can be used for uh, from point and click style if we talk about uh, enforcing validation then that can be achieved using validation rules in point and click style and trigger if th that is more complex in programmatical style <coughs> sorry so there are there are so many examples but yes i have discussed few okay now question arises where should we to coding and how salesforce has provided with several tools and there in there are two inbuilt tools which we can use throughout our development these are web based tool and those are called one the first one is the developer console the second one is developer mode so you can you can choose which one you you want to use but yes sometimes you need to use both why i would tell you so tell you soon okay so uh, we can discuss it now though uh, because uh, and for that i really need to show you how we can achieve this so let's see that thing here if you see this salesforce screen you would see a drop down menu over here and from here you can choose developer console it is already open over here what i can do i can explain you all the components you can see in this screen so basically this is a developer console it is a web based or a browser based console on which you can actually write execute codes so here this is a working area on which you are going to code and here you can create these much of components you can create a apex class you can create triggers you can create visual force pages and then there are so many things like lightning application which is a new uh, new actually technology you can say from salesforce and you can create all those things from here you can run your code from here as well this is a anonymous code window in which you can write code anonymously 
and you don't need to store those anywhere in Salesforce. What it means that if I need to start coding, I'll have to store the code somewhere and in our case, we will be storing those in Apex class or a Visual Force page. But in anonymous window, you are not going to do that. So, and this anonymous window actually runs as a current user. We will cover this in a separate topic, but for now, to make you understand this code, whichever code you write here does not store anywhere in Salesforce metadata. Now, if you run some code, it its logs can be seen here from this logs tab. Now, all the test results can be seen from here and their coverage you can see percent wise on this right pane of overall code coverage. Here these are the checkpoints. You can put checkpoints to troubleshoot where the problem is in your code. Then here it is a query editor tape. Here you can interact with database uh, of post.com platform and you need to write SOQL query here. This is provided you as a facility during your development to debug few things like if you are not getting a proper result you can actually check that result set here. This is I will explain you later, later and here you see the problems you are writing in your code if you have mistakenly write, uh, written some uh, some wrong syntax or a wrong statement then it would actually be highlighted in this problem area so this is about post.com developer console now let's see another thing which is a developer mode and for for using that thing what we need to do we need to actually enable that developer mode for this user that we can do by choosing this setup menu and from here let's navigate to manage users menu here we would see the list of all the users choose the one which you want to change their development mode setting let's choose this Here you see development mod. It is already enabled, so I don't need to do that. But if you see this is not enabled, please enable it and save the record. This way you have enabled development mode. Now let's see its usage. Now what I'm going to do, I have created few sample visual force page and let's find those. So pages. Okay. So here we get visual force pages. Now here is only one visual force page and what I can do, I can actually click on its label from here you see the whole code what I can do I can edit that thing here as well I 
as you can see I can edit the code from here here also I get type hinting like you have seen here but yes if we see preview from here this has a greater flexibility in terms of editing code here you see both the component responsible for showing this data here you see visual force page which is responsible for this UI and here you see the controller which is a plain class in which you have written business logic the benefit of using this editor is that when you make some changes here like something like uh, I can change it to okay let me change this thing and let me save this I see the result instantly after saving this thing so here I can see the preview of the output which is expected so this is how we can use these two kind of code editing tools